Hello there, I'm Thundaga and welcome to my How to Make a Pokemon Game tutorial series. This series will cover all of the essential info you need to make a Pokemon game in RPG Maker and Pokemon Essentials. In this episode we'll be looking at Pokemon types. First we'll cover how Pokemon types are defined in the PBS. Then we'll make our own new type, the Sound type. We'll then change some Pokemon and moves to be Sound type. After that we'll look into a couple of scripts where type specific data is set. And lastly, we'll show it all off in-game. With all that said, let's get into it. The types themselves are defined inside of the PBS folder, if we scroll all the way down to the very bottom here inside of the types text file. Here we can see the data for every type, with their name, as well as weaknesses, resistances, and immunities. These aren't mandatory to include though. For example, normal type here at the top doesn't have any resistances, though it is weak to fighting and immune to ghost. In the case of fighting type, it has multiple weaknesses and resistances, but no immunities. As you can see here, the weaknesses, resistances, and immunities all reference the type ID in all caps, and are separated by commas if there are multiple. Every type also has an icon position, which is a number that determines which graphic is used to represent this type in various places. For example, in our graphics UI folder, if we scroll down to the bottom in here, there's an image called types. This is where all of the type graphics live inside of a single image. The icon position determines which index is taken from this image, since the code knows to cut it up into a bunch of 64 by 28 pixel rectangles, and then grab a specific row from there. So for example, index 0 is normal, and then 1 is fighting, and 2 is flying, and so on and so forth. When we make a new type, we'll need to add a new graphic at the bottom of this image, as well as in a couple of other images. So now we've already covered the most important things that make up a type definition. The weaknesses, the resistances, the immunities, as well as the icon position. But there are two more things that we can set on a type. These are rarely, if ever, used though. The first of these is is special type equals true. By default, this is false, unless we specifically set it to true on a type. This setting makes it so, for Gen 1 to 3 move rules, without the physical special split, a type will be either special if true, or physical if false. This really only applies for those seeking to recreate Generation 1 through 3 battle rules though. Nowadays, we're accustomed to the physical and special split being determined by the move rather than the type of move. The other setting is set only on one type, and that's the Q marks type. The setting is is pseudo type, and this makes it so that way this type can be set for a move, but won't appear in the Pokedex when we're searching for Pokemon of specific types. This was mostly made for the move Curse, which from Generation 2 to Generation 4 appeared as this Q marks type. This type isn't used anymore though, since as of Gen 5 and onward, Curse is now a ghost type move. Alright, now that we've gotten that info dump out of the way, let's make our own new type for Sound type Pokemon. In our types TXT here at the bottom, let's just copy Fairy type and go in and paste and then begin modifying it to make our new type. Let's make it so that way the ID is Sound and the name is Sound as well. Then we'll make it so that way the icon position instead of 18 is 19, so it'll be the one at the bottom of the image. Is special type? Sure, whatever, we can keep it. For our example, the specifics of these don't matter too much, but let's just modify them a little so we can show them off in game. How about we go crazy and make it so sound type is immune to normal? And then for weaknesses, how about sound is weakness, or is weak to psychic and water and ground, for example? And then how about sound resists fighting and electric? Sure. Now that we have a new type, we could also go back through the list and make it so that way other types resist sound as well. So for example, if we scroll through this and we find where steel type is, which is type here, okay, we can make it so that way, I mean steel has a long list of resistances, we could add sound to it as well. So now steel will resist sound type. When we add a new type, it's important to go through and look into how it interacts with all the other types. Thankfully, it's easy enough to do through this one text file here. For our example, it would also be good to show sound being super effective against another type. So how about for normal type, we add to the weaknesses here. So normal is now also weak to sound. Our sound type Pokemon are going to really mess up normal type Pokemon. Now that we've got our sound type defined in PBS, let's add sound type to a couple Pokemon and moves. For the purpose of this example, we can make it so that way the Wismer line is all sound type instead of normal. And that's easy enough to do, where it has types for the Pokemon, we can change normal to sound. Let's scroll down and do this for Loud Red as well, and then we will also want to do that for Exploud. So now, this line of Pokemon is sound type. Then inside of the moves.txt, we can go to some other moves and make them sound as well. I think a good example would be Growl. That can be a sound move. 
And then while we're here, let's also go and search Boom Burst, and we can make that a sound move as well. And then of course, another great one would be Hyper Voice. I think that would make sense to be a sound move as well. There's a lot of moves that I think would make sense as sound moves. So now that we've got sound as a type defined in the PBS, and we've got Pokemon with sound type and moves with sound type, let's go in and modify those images real quick to add sound type. We talked about this earlier, but the first place that we should add sound type is in the graphics UI to the bottom of the types graphic. I've gone ahead and made my own version here with sound at the bottom, so now index 19 will be sound type. The next image we need to modify is inside of the graphics UI Pokedex folder, because if we scroll down to the bottom, there is also icon types here. Looking at this image, we can see it follows the exact same format as the previous types, we just need to go and add another sprite to the bottom. I've gone ahead and also made a new image file for this, with sound at the very bottom here, and uh, yeah, it's following the same format and everything, it's just doing a lot of copy and paste. Funnily enough, my secret for doing sound type here was using ground, the O-U-N-D, copying that, and then taking the S from Psychic. Just some real quick image editing stuff. The last one we need to do is inside of the graphics UI battle folder. The image we need to modify is cursor underscore fight. When we look at this image, we can see it's got two columns, and from top to bottom, it's following all of our types in the same format as before. The column on the left is when you're viewing a move of a certain type, and the column on the right is for when that move is selected in battle. Once again, I've gone in and made my own changes here to add a new set of cursor fight sprites on the bottom row for our sound type. With these three changes to these images made, I just need to go and add them to their proper graphics folders, and then we'll be able to see our sound type in-game. I'll leave a link to download my three modified images in the video description. Now as one last thing before we test it all out in-game, let's look at a couple places in the scripts where type-specific stuff can be set. The first example is inside of the Battler Statuses script here. Around line 82, we can see they start defining type-specific immunities to certain statuses. For example, around line 92 here, we can see that Fire is an immune type for Burn, and then underneath that, Electric, if the setting more type effects is true, becomes an immune type to Paralysis, Ice is immune to Frozen, so on and so forth. But looking up here around line 85, we can see no type is immune to sleep. Well, what if we made it so sound type was immune to sleep? The way that we would do that, we would just copy this here for has immune type for fire, go in and paste this right here, and then we could make it so that way sound type is immune to sleep. Then in scene play animation script, there is a list of all the types in their corresponding default animations. What we should do is probably add sound type here now that we've added sound as a type in our PBS. The way that we could do that is we could just copy this entire line here for fairy. Then we can go in and add a comma. So there's a new entry here at the end of this list. Hit enter for a new line, paste it. Then what we could do is start defining some defaults for our sound type moves. Like for example, a single target physical attack could have the default animation of dizzy punch. I don't know. Single target special could be boom burst, even though that's not the best one to choose. You know, you get the point. What I'm getting at is when you define a new type, it's a good idea to look at where things are set for all other types in the scripts, and then try to slot your new type in as well. If there's anything else unique you'd like to do for your new type, then you'll need to track that down in the scripts yourself. As always, Control shift f is your friend here. I think we're about ready to show this off in game now. Let's hit OK here, and then run our game, save our changes, and definitely hold left control to compile all of our changes, because we've made a ton. To show off the sound type in-game, I gave myself a loud red. Now, let's take a look at its summary, and we can see that its type is properly set to sound, and it's using the icon that we made. If we scroll over and check the moves, it also has the moves that we set to be sound as well. Hyper Voice, Boom Burst, and Growl all now properly show up as sound type moves. Now, let's show off our loud red with a battle against this trainer here. I specifically made their team to show off the strengths and weaknesses of the sound type. Alright, pro youngster Billy, what do you got for us? A Jigglypuff. We are super effective against it, so let's hit it with Hyper Voice. Take that. Part normal, and we know that sound is super effective against normal. Right off that, we're showing off super effective. Now, they're going to send out Amoongus. This Amoongus is going to try to spore us, but thankfully, we are immune to sleep. So let's just show that off real quick by using Growl. Now, come on, hit us with Spore. Oh, it doesn't affect Loudred, because sound type cannot be put to sleep. All right, let's, let's take it out with Boom Burst and move on to the next Pokemon in our example. What do you got for us next, pro youngster? A Magnemite. I will not switch. So, we resist Electric type. So, I'll hit it with Growl. This Magnemite will try to hit us with Shockwave. 
and it's not going to do a lot of damage. It's not very effective. All right. We're not very effective either, though, because Magnemite is part steel, so we'll see that it's not very effective. I mean, we're still strong enough to kill in one hit, but, you know, it's interesting showing off the uh, weaknesses and resistances of these types. Now, a Water-type Pokemon. Water is super effective against us. We can see that as well if we Growl here. Youch! It's super effective. Still not enough to take us out. We're going to win this battle with our Loudred. Our Sound-type Pokemon is pretty strong. We're kind of overleveled, but... Still, if we ever want to view our sound type in the Pokedex, by the way, what we can do is open the Pokedex, then while we're viewing the, like, the national decks or even the regional decks, if we hit the Z key on our keyboard, we can then enter search mode. Then we can go to the types, and we can see sound is now in this list, and we can search for all sound type Pokemon in the Pokedex. If you ever want to read more about defining a type, I recommend you check out this page of the Essentials Engine Wiki, which will be linked in the video description. And that does it for this tutorial on Pokemon types. I hope you feel more comfortable modifying the existing types, or even making your own new type in Pokemon Essentials. Thank you so much for watching. If you learned something from this tutorial, please remember to like and subscribe. To access my tutorial website, please check the link in the video description. As a reminder, this tutorial video is for Pokemon Essentials version 21.1, so in the future, it's very possible that the layout of some things could be changed. In general though, this series should get you where you need to go when it comes to making your own Pokemon fan game. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something, and I hope you have a good one. Best of luck to you and your Pokemon fan game endeavors. Bye now!